Hello everyone, I'm Karen, and I'm at the Cool Tool Studio today to show you how to add pattern to resin hair barrettes using silk screens. Here's what you need for this project, some casting resin, and then something to pigment your casting resin. If you want your barrettes to be opaque, you can use these pigment powders. If you want them to have some sparkle, you can use these mica powders. Or if you want a transparent barrette, you can use these resin dyes. You're also going to need a sand name block, a mini palette knife, some rubber gloves, and a respirator mask some barrette casting molds, and then some barrette clip findings, a UV resin curing lamp, some UV resin, some silk screens, a silk screen squeegee, and then any acrylic paint. In today's video, I'm working with small mixing cups because I'm only casting a very small amount of resin. But if you're working at home and casting lots of pieces at once, I highly recommend these silicone mixing cups that Cool Tools sells. They have all sorts of different measuring increments on the different sides for precise resin measuring, and they have a slotted corner that you can pour out of for precise pouring. But the best part about these cups is that when you're done and the resin has dried and cured, you can just peel it out and reuse these cups over and over again, reducing the amount of waste that you're producing in your resin practice. So before we get started, I've put on my respirator mask and a pair of rubber gloves, and I'm going to be pouring equal parts of both part A and part B of this resin. It's a one-to-one -one volume ratio and I'm filling to a little mark that I've made on my mixing cups here. This resin has a 30 minute work time and a 24 hour cure time, so that is plenty of time for us to add a pigment and get these casted. So again, equal parts here. And then I'm going to combined them together into one cup and mix them until they are evenly incorporated. And then I just like to go back and forth between the cups a couple of times to make sure I'm getting the sides and the bottoms incorporated as well. But we're starting off by putting as much resin as I can from one cup into the other. So I like these mini palette knives because of that nice flat edge to get sides, um, but they are a wider surface so it is easier to fold air in. So you're wanting to make sure you're kind of folding gently and stirring these completely without being too vigorous about it. Once you're feeling like it's looking pretty well incorporated, you can pour it back into the other resin cup, and that's just going to make sure um, that any of that part that was still in this cup is going to get incorporated into the now combined part A and part B that was in this cup. Once your resin has been fully mixed, you're ready to think about how you would like to pigment or tint your resin. Um, I made some examples here. Uh, this one has mica powder in it, and you can see how it kind of has a shimmer and a sparkle to it. This one has been pigmented with the pigment powder, and that's a more opaque look that it has. Um, whereas if you use the resin dyes, you're going to get a transparent um, color effect there. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can work on top of um, an opaque brett and a transparent brett and the different looks you can get there. So I'm going to be showing you how to mix in some mica powder and some dyes, um, but the pigment powder gets incorporated exactly as you would the mica. So I'm going to be separating my resin into two different parts here. That way I can add mica powder to one part and resin dye to the other part. So here I have glorious green mica powder. And I'm just going to scoop some up with my palette knife. And I'm going to fold it in. And I'm just mixing until I don't see any kind of chunks 
or any areas that look kind of um, transparent still and like they haven't received any powder. And then for the resin dyes, um, a little bit goes a long way. So I generally add one drop, see if I'm happy with the color, and add another drop if I want things to look a little more saturated. I do think I'm going to go for another drop there. It's not fully mixed, but I can kind of already tell. I want a little bit more power to this color. There we go. So in for this, I'm just mixing until just kind of some swirls you can still see. I'm mixing until it's one uniform tint throughout. So Cool Tool sells lots of different hair breadth molds for casting resin, um, but today I'm going to be working with this one. It's got the little kind of cutout in the middle, and it's kind of just the traditional barrette shape, um, but there's lots of different fun options for you. So I'm going to pour the mica powder pigmented one into this bottom shape here. And this resin is self-leveling, so it's going to kind of just settle into the mold and creep up to those edges on its own. Add just a little bit more. And then I'm going to pour this transparent color into this one here. And again, it'll self kind of settle. You can see that just one way there. Looks like this guy needs a little encouragement this way. And then I want this resin to be fully cured before I screen print on it. So I'm gonna allow it to set for 24 hours. So I have some breads that are already cured and ready to be silk screened. Um, there are so many different silk screening options um, cool Tools sells loads and loads of patterns, and there's a little something for everyone. Um, today, I'm just going to show you um, working with these two. When you're silk screening, it's important that the piece that you're silk screening on um, doesn't move or slide away during the silk screening process, or your pattern's going to look smudged. So, it's helpful to apply some tape to the back of your piece and keep it tacked in place while you're silk screening using this method. So my piece isn't going to slide away on me while I'm dragging paint across it now. So for the screen, I'm going to use this kind of palms frond looking silk screen. And I've got some acrylic paint here. And there's two different ways you can do this. Um, a lot of people apply the paint to the silk screen itself. Um, for whatever reason, I have better luck loading up my squeegee. Um, so just spend some time kind of doing some practice and some samples to get a feel for what works best for you. Um, that's a pretty generous amount. And then you want to hold your silk screen down because again, any kind of dragging during this process is going to um, kind of ruin those beautiful crisp lines that you can get with this technique. So I'm taking the paint, placing it paint side down, and then I'm kind of dragging back while I'm exerting some downward pressure. And I ran out of a little bit of paint there, so I'm going to pick it up and resume on the end there. And then you're going to peel up to reveal your pattern. So at this point, I'm going to set this off to the side so that I can dry and I'm not going to bump or ruin this pattern. And then I'm going to go and right away clean my screen. 
Um, these screens can be used over and over and over again as long as you take care of them. To remove something like acrylic paint, I just use a toothbrush in warm water and kind of work in a circular motion to make sure that I'm removing it. Um, flip it over, check both sides, and then allow it to dry flat. And you can use this again and again and again. So just like before, I'm gonna tape my piece down, line up my silk screen, kind of pick what part of the screen I like best, and then apply some more paint. Then you're holding down and dragging across while pushing down. So it's a really super simple and quick way to add a pattern. And some of these silk screens are really intricate and you can just get really beautiful, lovely patterns on your pieces. I'm gonna allow this one to dry as well. And then we're gonna talk about how we seal this acrylic paint. So now my acrylic paint has dried and I'm ready to seal it with some UV resin. Um, there's kind of two different looks that you can go for here. Um, if you like the way that the white paint looks on top of this transparent clip, you can leave it at that and seal this side. Um, but I actually kind of like the way that the paint looks through the transparent resin and how it takes on the pink kind of color. Um, so this is going to be the top part of my clip in this case, and because the casting resin kind of settled into the clip, um, there's a bit of a dip and an angle here. So I'm going to use the UV resin on this side to um, dome the surface because the UV resin is a doming resin. Um, it's got a little bit more viscosity to it, so it ends up kind of creating a dome form instead of settling into a mold. Um, so I'm going to apply that to this face and then we're gonna seal the acrylic paint when we attach the clip finding. Um, for this piece, it's on opaque, so it doesn't really look like too much when you flip it over. Um, so I'm just going to apply the UV resin to the side that has the paint on it. So it's got this kind of squeeze bottle and this pointed applicator and I'm just gently squeezing and working my way over the piece. And again, this is a domain resin, so you're gonna see that it kind of uh, sticks to itself and you're gonna have to kind of spread it a little bit. And that's why I'm working back and forth here. Coming out to this edge. And again, that's acting to not only seal in that paint, but also to kind of give the clip a nice domed shape. So on this side, since it's lower, I'm going to apply the UV resin in here. That's just gonna give us a nice rounded out top to our hair clip. Um, the bubbles that are there should pop on their own, but just as a little trick, um, if you have like a candle lighter, you can gently pass that over any bubbles and they will quickly pop. And then you're ready to cure this resin. This resin takes two to four minutes under a UV lamp, so I'm going to take it off to the side to do that. So my UV resin has cured. Um, you can kind of see how this now has a nice domed and rounded face instead of the concave shape that it used to have. Um, and now this acrylic paint on this one is nice and sealed in and protected. So now we're ready to apply the clip to this one and to seal the acrylic paint and apply the clip um, to this face as well. So Cool Tool sells these Brett clips that perfectly fit um, the elements that you're gonna cast from the molds. And this is just an extra step. Um, it might not be necessary, but it doesn't hurt. 
Um, I've got a sanding block here that I'm gonna drag across the surface of my clip. Um, and that's just to create some texture and some grooves on this clip for the resin to kind of grip into um, and make a really secure attachment here. I had a sample clip that I made that I didn't do this step on and it seems very thoroughly attached as well, but it never hurts to make sure your clip's gonna stay attached to your piece here. Um, I have some casting resin again that I've mixed up here and I'm using casting resin to attach this clip finding to the resin clip um, because this is opaque and I wasn't sure if the UV resin would be able to get enough um, light to really seal it um, and cure it and make that attachment nice and strong. So I'm using this casting epoxy resin to make this attachment. Um, however you feel comfortable applying this resin, you can pour it on, you can scoop it with your palette knife. Um, you're just wanting to put a thin coat on. If you put too much resin on, um, you run the risk of it kind of coming up and over the edge of your finding and getting in your spring um, or epoxying your clip shut. So just a thin coat will do it. And then the flat face down that you just sanded is going to go against your piece. And again, it fits perfectly. I usually come over to this edge Kind of make sure things are lining up well. And I kind of look at this top line of the clip and see if it's looking parallel to the metal finding here. And that looks pretty good. So again, I'm gonna leave this set for 24 hours. Um, I don't wanna disturb it before then because it won't be cured. For this one, I'm just gonna scoop little bit up onto my palette knife and I'm going to kind of brush the resin on and this is going to both seal the paint and um, attach the finding. And now again the flat side down. Um, again you can probably skip the step but I just feel a little more confident and this piece sticking when it's got some scratches for the resin to really grip into. And just like before, kind of tapping it around until I'm happy with the way that it's sitting on my clip. When you're happy with the positioning, you're gonna let them sit for 24 hours until fully cured. A day has passed and my resin is fully cured and my clip finding is very securely attached to the back of my resin pieces here. I'm really happy with how these clips turned out, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all do with this project. You could use different colors of acrylic paint, layer pattern, add inclusions to the resin, and there are just so many creative ways that you could make this project your own. Using silk screens is a really simple way to add a lot of intricate pattern to your pieces, and I hope you feel like you can give it a go. Thanks for watching.